Hello, 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 everyone. I hope that you are having a wonderful new year so far. Welcome to my channel. I'm Brenda Douglas, aka Real Estate Diva, and I am from Prince George's County, Maryland. And listen, I help people not only procure but also retain and maintain their home investment, right? If you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel. And listen, I want to also invite you to join um, my I Love HGTV group on Facebook, okay? It's I Love HGTV. Go ahead and join us. Listen, in this episode, we are going to be talking about an episode of um, House Hunters, Okay, so this in this episode, a mother helps her daughter go shopping for their, her first home, right? And listen, I don't need to tell you that things get pretty interesting when two strong personalities and opinions uh, come together, right? So the daughter, the daughter is a single mother of two boys, right? So naturally, she wants space for her sons to run and play, right? She also wants a backyard for them to just... Um, have a secure place to call home, right? <clears throat> so she's looking for a home and her mother goes with her, right? Now, this young lady, um, she has had several financial um, setbacks. She's like about 34 years old, right? And she has had financial setbacks, right? She moved in with her mom. She had increased her credit score. She got a job that pays more money. And um, she saved money to purchase a home, right? So she was intentional about becoming a homeowner, right? And sometimes we have to do that. We have to be intentional and we have to strategize to make our dreams come true, right? So let me say that that process and let me, let me, other, let me say that the process for becoming a homeowner and the time frame of owning a home can be different for everyone, right? Someone may have a credit score of 640 and then have some money saved, right? And um, and so they ta and then also they tap into a home buying program where well, they're ready to go. They're ready to purchase a home immediately, right? But then someone else may not have any money saved up and they may have poor credit, right? So that means that they have some work to do to make their dream come true, right? Every situation is different. And so that's why it is a great idea for you to meet with the real estate agent as soon as you have the desire um, to purchase a home. Once that dream drops into your spirit, it's time for you to get all of the information that you need so that you can make an informed decision, right? Don't let the agent pressure you into signing something until you're ready. You're only at this point doing a consultation to find out what you need to do to move forward. If you are ready to move forward and you feel comfortable with the agent, absolutely, you need to sign a buyer agent agreement. And by law, we're, we're legally required to, um, <clears throat> we are legally required um, to ask for that, ask you to do that, okay? But everybody's situation is different, and just because you meet with the agent does not mean that you're ready to move to purchase right then and there, which is why you want a consultation. And a lot of agents, most agents, all agents should be able to do that for you, to give you a consultation. They will have to partner with the loan officer for them to look at your financial situation. Now, some of you may not want to give the agent your finances or your or open up the door and let the agent into your financing and that's fine um, because you can also go and meet with a loan officer who then will connect with the real estate agent so you can either start with the real estate agent or start with the loan officer okay it doesn't matter they're both going to do the same thing which is to look at your picture or the snapshot of your situation and then advise you as to how you can move forward. But again, everyone's situation is different, right? So as soon as you have that desire, it is time for you to do your research and it's time for you to gather information so that you can move forward. Okay. Okay. So in this episode, the daughter 
she actually wanted a fixer-upper, right? And really, she wanted a vintage fixer-upper, right? And really, guys, the older the home is, the more character it has. Like, they just have different features. Um, they had different features than what they have today, right? So the daughter wanted a fixer-upper, right? She wanted the character, right? Um, and then also, she preferred to live close to work. Listen, location, location, location matters, right? You can change the house, but you can't change the location, right? And as a single mother, living close to work means um, that, <clears throat> excuse me, her children will more likely go to school um, in the area as well, in that same area, right? So if there's an emergency, she can get to her children um, quickly as well, right? True story, let me tell you. <clears throat> excuse me. My son was starting to suffer from asthma, right? And we lived in Waldorf, Maryland, and I worked in Washington, D.C. And for those of you who don't know, Waldorf is about a five-mile drive um, to Washington, D.C. Outside of rush hour, it would take about an hour and 30 minutes to get from Waldorf to Washington, D.C., right? So my son was at school, and the school was in our neighborhood. And so I get a call from the school saying that my son was having an asthma attack, right? Now, remember, it takes me an hour and 30 minutes to get home from work, right? <clears throat> now, for some of you, that may not seem like a far distance, but a mother's heart, oh my God, distance is everything. And all you want to do is fly, <laughs> fly, like mentally transport yourself, physically transport yourself by any means necessary to get there um, to your baby, right? Long story short, the attack was so bad that the school actually ended up calling the ambulance and taking him to the hospital without me, without his mother, guys. Oh, I was devastated, needless to say, right? It was his first ambulance um, ride. I was just learning about, um, I was just learning about asthma. I, I didn't know anything about asthma, right? I'm in my 20s. I had no idea about it, how serious it was, right? Anyway, I was so devastated about being so far away and not being able to get to him. I kept thinking about the ambulance ride and him being in there by himself without having me beside him. It was, ugh. So anyway, anyway, guys. <clears throat> That's over. He's fine. <laughs> so anyway, let me go back to the story. So um, back to this episode of House Hunter. So um, my 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 point was that location is everything, right? So anyway, mom, being mom, she wanted her daughter to get a newer home. You know, something where she didn't have to do a lot of work, a lot of make, uh, fixing it up. You always said maintenance, but a lot of fixing it up. Um, she wanted her to be able to move right in and enjoy the property, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. The daughter was pre-approved for $275,000, but, but she wanted to purchase a home for $200,000, right? Which I think is phenomenal. I think it is very, very wise, guys. Guys, listen, just because um, you were approved for a, a higher price point, does not mean that you need to purchase the home at a higher price point, right? You want to live comfortably, okay, so that you're not house rich and cash poor, right? You want to live comfortable so that you can enjoy your life and not stress over bills, right? So those of you who are purchasing homes um, that require a condo fee, a HOA fee, all of those things you want to factor into this price uh, range again. You don't want to be house rich and cash poor. You don't want to live to pay bills, right? You want to enjoy your life. And yes, it is true. It is true that if you uh, purchase a home in a higher price bra bracket, you will have more houses to choose from, and the locations uh, will be different as or could be different as well, right? <clears throat> so that is true when you purchase in a higher bracket. But again. I don't want, like, I want you to be comfortable, right? And for those of you who don't believe that you get more options with a higher price point, go to Realtor.com, the website, select 
let's say 180,000 is your highest price point, right? Then do a second and see what your options are and then do a second query, right? And make your high, highest price point, oh, 275,000, right? And you'll see that with the $275,000, you will have more options to um, choose from, okay? But again, just because you were approved for that higher amount does not mean that you need to purchase in that price bracket, right? Um, again, you want to live comfortably. Okay, so back to house hunters. All right, so for those of you who are just joining us, we are talking about an episode of House Hunters. So listen, go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. But in this episode, we're talking about a mother who goes with her daughter, um, who is a single mother, and the mother goes with the daughter to help the daughter um, shop for homes, right? The daughter wants a fixer-upper in the city, but her mother wants her to move in the suburbs and she wants her to get a home that doesn't require a lot of fixing up, right? So, and as you know, grandmamas, woo, woo, they can be serious about their grandbabies, right? <laughs> and their kids, especially their daughters, right? So anyway, listen, and truthfully, purchasing a home can be so emotionally stressful, right? Even if everything goes off without a hitch, it's still an emotional transaction, right? Because it is one of, I'm sorry, guys, my lights, my dog jumped over here and hit the light. Purchasing a home can be emotionally stressful, right? Because it is one of the biggest financial investments that you will ever make, number one. And number two, purchasing a home is a 15 to 30 year commitment, right? In an apartment, you can move every year if you want you know they go up on the rent and you leave right you get a fixed rate mortgage which is what i suggest um and you are locked in for 15 to 30 years depending on which type of which uh the duration of the mortgage you choose right <clears throat> so anyway luckily she um had her mother present to help her to stay rational okay which is actually not a bad idea because you know, again, you tend to be emotional during this transaction, and so it's not a you not a, it's not a bad idea to bring someone along who can be irrational because you're not able to be rational and emotional at the same time. It's just it's not possible if you're rational. You know, you can't do them both at the same time. Whew. Anyway, prior to going to the house house tours or to seeing the homes. The daughter has sits down and she has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her mom, right? She knows her mom, right? So she has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her mom and she asked her mom to please be open-minded and to remember that this home is for her and not for, the home is for the daughter and not for the mother, right? I don't want to get that confused. <laughs> I don't want that to come out wrong. But anyway, the home is for me and not you, mom. <laughs> so anyway, the daughter set the expectations for her mom, but she was grateful for her presence, right? Um, and, you know, she knows her mom. She knows her mom might be closed-minded. She knows her mom is opinionated. So that is why she decided to obviously have this conversation with her. Okay, now remember, she was approved for $275,000. So here we go. Here we go. House hunting. Okay. Home number one, it was built in 1931 and it's a bungalow. Now, understand that when you have a home that is built before 1987, you're gonna have to get a lead inspection, right? And the real estate agent will give you a booklet about that. When you get a home that is um, has been built before 1987, you have to get a lead inspection, why? because the paint and the materials that they use prior um, to um, 18, um, 1987, they're different, right? They use lead paint back in the days, right? And we all know that lead paint can cause lots of problems, especially in children, right? And a lead, inspection, a lead inspector will take something and, and then rub it across the uh, window ledges and the um, rub it against the paint, peel and paint. If there's any peel and paint, they'll take samples of the paint to confirm whether or not it's lead, okay? So if the home, again, if the home is built before 
1987, you need to have a lead inspection. So this home was built in 1931. So guess what? She's going to have to get a lead inspection if she chooses home. Anyway, it has three bedrooms. It's a row home. Of course, it's in the city, right? Um, <clears throat> now, let me just also say, it. again, it has three bedrooms. Homes typically have three bedrooms, right? And it's crazy because when you're renting a, an apartment, a three-bedroom apartment can range to 1,700 and above. I mean, and above. And I'm talking five, 6,000 more. I'm talking above here in the DMV or the DC metropolitan area. Woo-wee. A three-bedroom. Anyway, and it has only one bathroom. Now, remember I said it was her, the mother, single mother, and two sons and right now it is just the three of them right suppose she gets married hmm. support when the kids grow up now let me just say that this could very well be a starter home for her right remember i said the um well actually i didn't say it but the home is up the neighborhood is up and coming right so that means that the neighborhood is evolving right they're transitioning they may be taking um they may be renovating um, homes that are built up, right? So they're revitalizing the neighborhood. And what will happen typically is that the value increases when they revitalize these um, these neighborhoods, right? So she's in an up and coming neighborhood. The home, the uh, neighborhood is transitioning. If this is a starter for home for her, it is perfect. Why? Because she can move in at a lower price, purchase the home. The home equity skyrockets as the home, as the neighborhood is being revitalized. Then she can take that equity and buy a home, right? Awesome. So again, as the neighborhood um, evolves, the equity will increase. And that's one of the advantages of purchasing a home in a neighborhood that's up and coming, if you can tolerate it, right? So the other thing about this home is it has arches in the doorway. So this is the vintage home that she was talking about and has all of the original um, features, including like the doorknobs, the arched entryways and doorways. Um, but there's no stove. She doesn't have a stove, so she's going to have to buy an appliance or she's going to have to um, add that into her um, condition. Sometimes sellers will... Um, uh, give you appliances, but she may want to choose her own appliances or remove them all if she's talking about being wanting a fixer upper, right? But she does have options, right? <clears throat> or she can just ex again accept it with no stove, or she can ask for credit, right? Um, the other thing is that there was a wall that was kind of breaking up the space. Um, back in the day, <laughs> I probably could have said that another way. Historical homes. <laughs> um, at one time, they would have, um, the rooms were separated. Like the living room was off to itself, divided by a wall. The dining room was off to itself. Nowadays, people like open space, right? They like, um, they love the whole open floor plan, right? Where the dining room and the living room, where you can see pretty much everything at a glance. The kitchen is not off to itself. Is connected with the living room. People love open floor plans now, but this is a vintage home, 1931, right? So there was a wall breaking up the space that she did not like and plans to break down $4,000, depending on how much the contractor charges. Um, the other thing is that it had an unfinished attic. Now that can be considered, <coughs> excuse me, guys, that can be considered a bonus space, right? It's unfinished. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. So she can make that space into whatever she wants. She can make it into a movie room. She can make it into a playroom for the sons. The point is it's going to cost her money to finish up that attic, right? But it is a bonus space. The other thing is that it is the closest. This home is the closest to her job, right? Um, the other thing is that it has bars on the windows. Now, some people, you know, they're not bothered by bars on the window, and I'm sure that that's for safety, but some people are totally against bars on the window. Um, they feel some type of way about it, have their opinions about it. Um, but in this episode, that um, the, the windows had bars on them. Now, I don't know. It never said that if the bars... 
<clears throat> had a key where they can come open in the event that there's a fire. I'm not sure how that works. I don't really deal with bars and windows and don't really want to. But anyway, this property had bars on the window. My opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> deck. It had a deck in the backyard. And the backyard was fenced, right? What I love about fenced backyards is it gives them the... Um, it gives them the uh, option to get a pet, get a dog, right? When you live in an apartment. And first of all, you got this small balcony, right? But when you have a pet, you have to pay extra. You have to pay not only a pet deposit, but you also pay um, pet rent every month, right? So when you have a fenced backyard, it gives not only the children a space to play and maybe put a... Um, you know, them things that they bounce up and down on um, trampoline um, or playground structure or even put a, uh, what is it, a swimming pool back there. Um, but it also, <clears throat> excuse me, but it also will, um, but it will also, um, uh, you know, give them the option to having a dog. If they want a pet, they can get a pet because they got a fence in the backyard. Right, it did have the original hardwood floors, and it had crown molding, and it has a fireplace. This particular property was priced at two hundred and five thousand dollars. Now, remember her pre-approval; um, she was pre-approved for two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. This home was priced at two hundred and five thousand dollars. Okay, property number two. It is in the suburbs. Um, the homes to her look cookie cutter, right? And what that means is pretty much the neighborhood looks like. All the homes are the same. So it's maybe a home full of split foyers or a home full of co um, colonials and a home full of um, bungalows. And I'm, and I'm naming those particular style homes because that's what Maryland has most of. That's what the DM. well, that's not what the DMV, but that's what Maryland specifically has a lot of. Split four years, three split levels, split four years, colonials, colonials, bungalow, bungalows, lots of them, right? So this neighborhood was a suburban neighborhood, and they had cookie-cutter homes. Um, the uh, space was a larger space, and that's typically what happens in the suburbs, is that you have more space. That's one of the benefits of living in the suburbs versus the city. You get more land and you get more space, right? <clears throat> um, but this property was missing a refrigerator, okay? So another appliance is missing. Again, she could ask for credit from the seller or she can purchase her own refrigerator and, and make it, you know, design it the way she wants, right? This property also has a fenced 10 yard backyard. But the problem is on the other side of the fence, there was a busy street, right? Now, if you're a mother, <laughs> if you're a parent, you know that that really could be nerve-wracking if you have children, right? Suppose they get on the outside of that fence. Suppose they kick a ball out there and then they want to go and get this ball and they have to go out the fence. So that, that just adds to stress, I think. Anyway... Anyway, on the other side of the fence was a busy street, so that was a concern for her. This particular home had four bedrooms and two bathrooms, um, so she really wouldn't have to grow into another space. You know, her kids get older, she get married, she's pretty much, you know, they don't really have to move. She has four bedrooms and two baths. She don't have to share. She has one, she and her man has a uh, bathroom, kids have a bathroom, you know, they don't have to upgrade. Um, <clears throat> or they just have more space to get ready, okay? They also had a bonus space in that there was a recreation uh, room or space in the basement. This home is in a quarter sack, which some people will um, consider that to be um, an advantage because the kids can ride their bicycle out there. They can play out front or back. You know, it's in a quarter sack, which is actually typical for the suburbs. It is further away from her job, though. Remember, you can change the, you can change the house, but not the location, right? And this home has a fireplace. I don't know if I said the first one has a fireplace. 
but it does. It has a fireplace. All of these homes have a fireplace. Okay, home, and I'm sorry. And house number two is priced at 252000 Remember, again, her pre-approval amount is 275 House number three. House number three is back in the city. It is in an up-and-coming neighborhood, and we've already discussed that. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, it's in a desired location. So this particular part of the city is something, is a city that's, um, I mean, a part that's, highly desirable right it's hard to get a house in there this home was built in 1920 so question 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 will she have to get a lead inspection let me let you think about that for a second the answer is yes because the home was built um before 1978 remember any home that's built before 1978 they will have to get a lead inspection and your real estate agent, <coughs> excuse me guys, and the real estate agent will give you a booklet. You'll have to sign something talking about the lead inspection. This home was built in 1920. Yes, she will be, he, she will be required to have a lead inspection. This home was updated from top to bottom. It was modernized. It had granite countertops. Um, it was in a city, but it felt suburban, right? I've heard people say that before. I guess maybe the homes are spaced out more. She probably has a bigger yard. You know, it gives it a feel where, where they have kind of the bells and whistles. It, probably not a lot of traffic in this part of the city. Um, <clears throat> they had nice size rooms. <coughs> this home was turnkey ready. She didn't have to make any renovations to this home. The yard was big. I said that before. And it was, again, modernized, close to stores. And again, it had a fireplace. The price was $205,209. Whatever. $210,900. Okay. $205,900, actually. I just kind of rounded up. Anyway. Okay, so which one do you think she chose? If you said house number one, which is closer to her work, which is a fixer-upper, um, which is in an up-and-coming neighborhood, you are absolutely right. She chose house number one because you can change the home but you can't change the house, right? I mean, the location. You can change the home, but you can't change the location, right? The other thing I want to tell you guys is listen, 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 listen. Here are the, let me, let me just go ahead with the takeaways. Here are the takeaways from this episode, okay? <clears throat> Remember that the, price, the process and the time frame of owning a home is different for everyone. The only way you're going to know what it, which one applies to you or how, how far or how soon you can become a homeowner is to meet with a real estate agent. Okay. The other thing is you need to, or, or loan officer, a real estate agent or loan officer, meet with them. They'll, and then they'll be able to go over everything with you and tell you what your time frame looks like for you. What is the process? What do you have to build your credit? Do you have to increase your income? Is the time for you now, or do you have to wait a year or two, okay? But you never know until you make that move, right? The other thing is that you need to know or define what is a necessity for you. What is important to you? What is a necessity, and what are you willing to compromise on? You always, you will have to make compromises, right? You will, because there's no such thing as the perfect home. There just isn't. There's no such thing as the perfect home, but there is a home that's right for you, right? Okay, and remember, again, like I said before, <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys, it must be time for me to, my allergies. Anyway, like I said before, you can change the house, but you cannot change the location, right? As far as your pre-approval amount, listen, guys, just because you're approved for that much, for however much, doesn't mean that you need to buy at the type top of your price point, okay? You need to purchase a home in a price uh, where you can live comfortably and not be house rich and cash poor, okay? You want to be comfortable. 
you don't want to regret this decision because it's so much to handle. And that includes the homeowners association fees and condo fees. They are not optional. They will foreclose if you don't pay those things. So you need to keep that into consideration if you choose to live in a home that has a homeowner association. And by the way, a condo and a town home, <clears throat> a condo association on a, or an association can be with the condo, a um, town home, or a single family home. So there are some single family homes that have an HOA. Okay. And those HOA fees are mandatory. They are not optional. You will have to pay them every month or they will foreclose or they can foreclose on you. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Purchasing a home again can be emotionally stressful. So it is okay to bring a friend, a rational friend, <laughs> not a jealous one, not a, not one that's going to, you know, bring a rational friend <laughs> or family member to help you. If you are single and you just want the support, but then remember to set the expectations. And last but not least, as soon as you have the desire to purchase a home, you want to have a free, no obligation cons consultation with a real estate agent. Okay. In terms of a loan officer, you want to find out what his or her fees are. What points does that particular company have? Because you are able to shop around for a loan officer or a, or a mortgage company that has um, better rates, right? So you're able to shop for better rates. Legally, you're able to, okay? So <clears throat> again, you want to have a, a free, no obligation consultation. When you meet with the loan officer, they don't have to pull things you want to make sure. You, again, you want to find out what the points are. What are the fees and things of that nature? What are the interest rates? And then you can shop around for a mortgage um, lender as well as a real estate agent. Again, you can have the consultation absolutely free. All right, guys. It is time for me to go and wash this hair. <laughs> it has been real. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of HGC, HGTV House Hunters. Brought to you by Brenda Douglas, a.k.a. Real Estate Diva from Prince George's County, Maryland. Thank you so much.